so the Silver Age doesn't exactly come directly after the Golden Age. So you might be wondering, hey, so like, what about the wartime era? Isn't that like seven or eight years of Disney history? You know, the era that arguably kept Disney from going under? And like, yeah, I get it. That's part of Disney history, and I said I'd look at all the films. But one, I, I don't like anthologies. And two, I really don't like anthologies. I'm sorry. You saw how I acted about Fantasia. You would think anthologies would be perfect for my ADHD adult brain, but it's actually quite the opposite. I don't have much time to connect to these stories, and honestly, hopping from idea to idea isn't fun for me. It's just how I am. Um, I When I do like anthologies, it's about characters that I've already gotten an attachment to and an understanding about, so I'm already pre-invested. Things like the Grables are fine. I like those. I, I, I don't like anthologies of characters I've never heard of. But I did watch them, so, you know. I just don't want to make videos on content I don't really enjoy. Uh, usually even films and shows that I think are bad, there are parts I like, or I enjoy the process of critiquing them and breaking them down. I, I, I don't think I would find that as fun and interesting and engaging to do with the wartime era. I'm sorry if you love these. They're historically interesting, but otherwise I think they're just okay. There are some high points, but for the most part, they're average. There's my review. Anyways, let's get to the Silver Age. So this age starts with Cinderella, marking Disney's return to theatrical films, and ends with The Jungle Book and the death of Walt Disney. So these will be reviewed once again in order of how much I like them, starting with the least of the bunch and then moving on from there. You know the deal. I like to get positive as I move on. Going into this project, I'm not gonna lie and say that I was particularly excited for this lineup of films. The Silver Age exists in this sort of positivity purgatory in my mind, where I feel very neutral about them. They're mostly critically loved classics, but there's just something about them that keeps me from getting quite so hyped up. They aren't the first of the first, so that they're not necessarily as historically important as the classics. Um, they're not these mysterious dark horses that I haven't actually looked into or I haven't watched, but I have an interest in, despite the fact that I haven't seen them and I'm not emotionally attached to them and I know there's no nostalgia there. So looking at them, I don't feel a lot, if that makes sense. So the Silver Age marked the studio's return to big feature films with large budgets and the more fairy tale structure. Uh, it also saw the beginning of the company's use of the Xerox, leaving many of the films looking much rougher and to a lot of people really unappealing. This era was full of some spectacular highs and some shocking lows. So let's get started. Oh, it's the sword in the stone. The sword in the stone. It can't be. Is this film that charming forgotten classic that folks have been rightfully raving about? Maybe. But maybe not. Critics throughout the years have thought poorly of this film, and I'm inclined to agree with them for, I mean, at least a bit. It's definitely not the best movie here. I'm talking about it first for a reason. This movie is the second to last in the lineup before the start of the Bronze Age, and I feel like it's the most fitting bridge to that age. It's so lost. And I'm not, I know I'm not speaking positively about the movie, but I do like aspects of it. I mean, I'm not sure what it is, but there's this sort of, I don't know, there's some sort of charm to it that makes me want to like it. 
Uh, maybe it's the aesthetic choices, maybe it's character design, but there's something about it that makes me want to enjoy it. Maybe it's just a more nebulous quality that doesn't have much of an overall effect on the film, but there's something there. Uh, it's a simple, fun, light, fairly enjoyable watch, but it's not that good of a movie. Um, this isn't necessarily a negative trait, but it does feel the most childish of the Silver Age in both wording, structure, tone, and, like, the moral story it's trying to tell. Um, story. I say story, but the film doesn't really have much of a story. But it's more loosely connected lessons that don't really service or allude to the ending. Uh, other than that, the songs aren't very great or memorable. Higgitus Figgitus is fun enough. Uh, but it's a little short, and I like songs that do something. Uh, sometimes songs will, you know, build the world, tell you more about the characters, and sometimes songs just show up to be a spectacle. These songs don't really do any of that. I mean, they're not the worst things ever, but they really leave a lot to be desired. That's kind of how I feel about the whole movie. If I had a world of my own, everything would be nonsense. Nothing would be what it is, because everything would be what it isn't. So this movie was released in 1951. It follows Alice, a young, imaginative girl who falls into the rabbit hole and hijinks ensue. I think my biggest problem with this movie is that it feels like an anthology that won't commit to being an anthology, and I think you know how I feel about those at this point. On the positive side, it does have a delightfully whimsical tone and energy, very bright, vibrant colors, but frankly, at the end of the day, I found this movie to be a tad bit overstimulating, and I think there's just not enough room to breathe with all the disjointed, very, very, very loosely connected chaos. I think that's the point of the movie, but I don't really like that. Even he orders me around. Well, there's one thing. They can't order me to stop dreaming. So Cinderella follows, surprisingly, Cinderella as she, through a little hard work and a lot of luck, breaks free from her abusive home and finds a simplistic but idealistic love. I liked this movie, or I liked some of this movie. So far, I think Cinderella has the most personality out of all of the princesses. I care about her. She has wants. She has needs. It seems like she has a level of agency, and I really like that. She has things to say about her lot in life, and she does things about it, and I like that. But <laughs> that's the part of the movie I do like. The part I don't like is the fucking mice. Now, I don't just hate the mice. I think they're good comic relief. They're cute enough. They can be a little funny. There's just too much. It is 100% just overstepping within this film and it's taking too much of a front and center role for me to just ignore it. Also, I don't like the way they talk. When they sing, it's more tolerable, but they talk too much. Back to another positive though, the stepmother is wonderfully threatening. She definitely has an aura where she means business. The visuals are great. Overall, this is a pretty good movie, just not something that just sticks well with me. And uh, 15 plus 2, 101. 101? I'm really surprised that this beat out Cinderella and Alice in Wonderland, because when I would think back to this movie, I frankly would not remember much about it. Um, it's got a fairly dry, lengthy opening. It takes a while to get started, but I think 101 Dalmatians has a lot more tension and atmosphere than almost any of the other films within this age. I also think that it fits the Xerox look the most. That gritty, dirty, sooty look fits this sort of post-industrial European aesthetic. I think it fits. I think Cruella really makes the movie. Uh, it's fun to watch her. I, I, I love a villain that really just steals the show, and she does. Peter Pan! Oh, Peter! I knew you'd come back. Um, Peter Pan is a little hard to summarize. Uh, it's mostly the story of Peter, Wendy, and their struggle against a pirate crew led by Captain Hook. Um, that's technically the story, but the story is just that backdrop for the overall message of growing up. Um, I think one of my biggest gripes with this is that it lacks 
a story. It lacks much of a narrative, but I think it doesn't hurt this movie in the way that it hurts some of the other movies. The fun, the whimsy, the world kind of oversteps that, and I think it's fine. I don't mind that it's not a super deep story. Um, I do really like Captain Hook. That's going to be a running theme with me. I, I enjoy villains with a lot of personality. He's very zany. He's very wild. It's fun. I enjoy watching him. Overall, pretty decent movie. I want to stay in the jungle. Huh? <laughs> you wouldn't last one day. <sighs> I'm not afraid. All right, Jungle Book. Um, I'm really, really, really surprised that I don't have this as the best of the best. But here we are. Um, now, this movie still holds on its own. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of positives about this film. I think it's the best looking film that utilizes Xerox. It's got the cleanest looking Xerography. It has hands down the best songs of the Silver Age, and they are classics in their own right. The story is emotionally fantastic, it's heartwarming, it's tense. The emotions of these characters are very clearly tangible. I love all the non-Mowgli characters. I mean, Mowgli's fine, but the other characters are where the movie truly shines. Bagheera, Baloo, I think they really make the movie shine. Shere Khan is very threatening. I think he could have had more of a presence in the film, but where, when he was there, it was pretty good. Overall, very good movie right here. I mean, third, third place isn't too bad. What a perfectly beautiful little lady. I surprisingly liked Lady in the Tramp. Shock. I mean, I I expected to like it. I loved this movie as a kid, but I when I was thinking back before watching it again, I was mostly like, oh, I figured it would just be all right. But I think I really like this movie. I like the voice work. I really think that 19th century Americana aesthetic is very striking and it, it very much so makes it stand out against its contemporaries and since i'm on the subject of talking about the visuals i love how the camera work emphasizes the sort of visual difference between man and animal and that sort of perspective it very much so feels different and i like that one of the negatives i would say is the story is pretty small in scope it's like not very grand they don't really go very many places but i think it's fine i think ultimately that helps the focus remain as tight as it is overall this is a very good movie with very very few flaws uh, <laughs> excuse me let me just um <clears throat> you you didn't see that we're not gonna address that today you hear that samson I think this whole age has been a surprise for me. The movies I thought I would like are pretty low, and the movies I had no real feelings about are up here at the top. I had not seen Sleeping Beauty up until this point, and <laughs> really, I can't believe I spent my life sleeping on this beauty. This film was intended to be the third release, and you can see that didn't go as planned. Um, its production spanned nearly a decade, seven or eight years, I think. It's the last traditional princess movie up until the Renaissance era. And I think it's wild that I walked away from this loving it as much as I did. Like, one, I didn't grow up with this. No nostalgia. Two, there aren't any talking animals. You throw an animal in a movie and it automatically boosts it a little bit to me. Three, <laughs> it actually spends more time with the comedic side characters than the main character. So, like... What's in it for me? Aurora's maybe in this movie for like 20 minutes, 15 or 20 minutes, and somehow I don't care. It's fine. I think I just realized that the movie is more about the story and the world than it is Aurora specifically. And I think that's fine. This movie leans the heaviest into the aesthetic and general feel of a fairy tale. And I think that's why her limited role doesn't really affect the movie negatively. This movie feels like a fantastical, larger than life sort of just experience. Just It's just dripping with visual beauty. I think that's just my vi biggest praise for the film. It's just visually stunning. And you're definitely going to notice this as a trend with me 
especially as we progress through the Disney films, I can be easily seduced by a pretty face. And oh boy, this movie has pulled me in with that. Now, I don't deride a movie too much when it doesn't look appealing. That's not something that bothers me that much. But when a movie looks striking, it is just a thing of beauty. It beautifully marries the aesthetic of medieval architecture and art with modern for the time art styles. The, the locations, the sets, everything, that all, it all looks good. I think the character designs look good. I think every character tells a bit of a story with their design. I like Ma Maleficent, I like Aurora, I like the bright colors everywhere. It looks good. That's all I'm saying here. It looks really good. All of these films, I, I, sa I would say, save for 101 Dalmatians and The Jungle Book had a pretty simple story without much depth to them. But I think this one pulled off its simplistic story the best. Um, it was cohesive. Every aspect of the film followed that one through line. And I think that helped it. I think it's good. Great movie. Most of the time, when you look at various eras and ages, there is a general consensus about which ones are good and which ones are bad. And the only consistency I saw was that people don't like the sword and the stone. Otherwise, I think this is just the most personal in terms of which ones really speak to you. So I'm curious, which ones speak to you? Let me know. Oh wait, oh no, the ball is approaching and I can't go in this ratty old character design. Good heavens, child. You can't go in there. Let's see, dear. Your size and the shade of your eyes. Mm -hmm. Something simple. But daring, too. Oh, just leave it to me. What a gown this will be. Um, yeah. This, this is the skit. This is my new design. Live with it. I'm beautiful. Up next is, of course, the Bronze Age. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. You know this at this point. See you next time.